Yehova Malak, Ola Malamad. Yehova Malak, Yami Rakis. Yehova Gadol, Makarian Tios. Yehova Adonai, Yehova Elohim. Kurios Tios Pantacreta, Kurios Tios Pistos. El de et Yehova, el emuna Yehova. I basilian kurios otios o pentakreta, basilios basilian kai kurios kurion. Yehova dabar halal, Elohim dabar halal. Yehova gadol. Yehova Elohim Gadol Gadol Gebura El Elohim Israel Gadol Gadol Gebura Derek Emunabakar Mishpat Shava The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself up to unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh, Sidkenu, to the highest. And peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry, of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. When Lord God, the Father, would stand before us like the refining fire, who shall stand with clean hands before him? The people, as we read in Psalms 15, when King David writes that psalm on the incident of Milkanic Kav, Perez Uzziah, those who walk upright, as good as wearing in the Old Testament, in this Levitical priesthood, Urim and Thummim, walking in his presence by grasping the mandates which have been given for us to be our life. The entire failure of the Christendom, what went wrong, is exactly the pattern what these people, they are walking in the standards of the Israelites. Israelites failed to recognize their life and the standards what Lord God has kept them alive. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9 called us Kshima, which is meant to say, to hear and to obey the word of Lord God. They failed to grasp the spiritual implications. As such today for us in the present Christendom, we have made an utter failure to realize it is by the word of Lord God and by his knowledge, by grasping his spiritual implications to this life, we could walk as the word of Lord God demands to walk before him, upright and blameless. So who would appear like Daniel, the man who said three times, the way he knelt before Lord God the Father and he made his prayer and it became a daily order of his life. It is day by day the same one. He hasn't changed. It is the same. Day by day, it is the same repetition what he did. 
Remembering Lord God every day, he did the same thing. And in Daniel chapter 6, we find the mouth of the lions was shut in the lion's den because he claimed in verse 19 of chapter 6, my innocence was found before Lord God. And the word over here, what we read, to say that, which he's been for us as a challenge. In verse 22, he says, My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me, for as much as before him, innocence he was found in me. What a great word it is, innocency. And who could appear as it claims in Malachi 3, 2, before the burning, burning fire furnace of the Lord, who could stand? The answer is very simple. Those who walk in his presence in upright standards. Worshipping Lord God in spirit and in biblical truth in order to understand the biblical spiritual implications to be grasped in our life. Use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins. And let's come back and learn the mind of Christ, which has been prepared and kept for us on today's date, for Lord's glory. And the thing what we learn over here, as we read in Psalms 150, verse 6, which teaches to us that everyone that has breath, and we read that word, Natshama, followed by the root cause called as Nasham, and it meant to say to bear burden, and if you have that burden of the Lord God, if you are living on this earth in comparison with Nehemiah 9, 6, the five U's, in order to begin from eternity past to eternity future, and then describing the man on this earth, and making him to look the heaven of the heavens of the heavens, the entire earth and the sea, all what they need to do, they need to prostrate before the Lord and respect to the homage of the royalty to God what we need to give. And it's not just the one who has breath or this burden, but in fact indeed the heavens and the earth, as we read in Psalms, they describe the glory of Lord God, the nature, the creation of Lord God describes him. But we who have been made in the image of Lord God, haven't come to that thought to describe him in spirit and in biblical truth. So, dear brethren, worshipping Lord God in spirit and in biblical truth, it's the bona fide duty of every believer to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that we could be clean, clear, accounted to prove our innocency before the Lord, so that nothing shall offend them, as he said, great peace they have that they love the law. And those who hate and abhor every false way, they walk in the path of truth. And as they walk in the path of truth, they remember to once again grasp the spiritual implications of this great life on this earth. And they walk to have breath in them that is the burden of Lord God. And they perform the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in the standards of Kol, the Mama, the Ka, under the rushing mighty wind. We shall continue after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of Lord God, which has been given for us on today's date in eternity past. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace to learn the word. Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, would enlighten and challenge us by the things which are prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past. All to the praise of your glory alone, O Lord and nothing else we require on this earth. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. Remembering Lord God every day, doing His will, is what everyone has to wake up. The believers, the work given to them is to go and make disciples of all the nations. In order to make disciples, first we have to join as disciples. In John 1, 10 through 12, we find the great passage which teaches to us that the world was made by God and the world knew him not. 
and the word over there for world what we find in John chapter 1 in verse 10 it says that called to be as cosmos and this cosmos is nothing but an order or government or the way how Lord God the Father teaches to us to be the affairs what they make an arrangement so this world he says knew him not the word new over here is Ginesco, which meant to say perceive. The reason why the unbelievers do not perceive is purely because they haven't had the life which has to be taught by the believers. The life of light, the life of salt, the life what every believer which they have to live under the burden of having a birth pangs in them. So Satan has blinded their eyes, 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. If you are searching the will of God in 1 Timothy 2.4, it teaches to us that. None to be perished, the first work of evangelism. And then he claims everyone should come to the epinosis knowledge of truth, called as full knowledge. So, every believer should make on this earth, whoever is having this breath in their nostrils, we call this breath in the sense life in them. But for believers, the breath is burden, not shema. So, as you have this burden, you should be worried about the people who are perishing, who have been made in the image of God, for which cause Christ our Lord our God died to release everyone on this earth who are in that slave market of sin. No doubt the people may have to think Muhammad to be their God, Gautama Buddha to be their God who led them in the path of enlightenment and all. Anyone who has been born in the flesh, apart from my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, because of the metamorphisms that have happened, and the virgin, what we call in Matthew 1, to look the mone kine, that is the only eligible one, because eternal God becomes now God man for the purpose that there is none who could qualify to pay in full. So being born out of the olds in nature, he is delivering everyone who has been there into that slave market of sin a path, a path of showing them the way of salvation. So it may be Muhammad, Gautama Buddha, or any one great saint, what they think themselves on this earth, by living a moral good life. Everyone, for everyone, Christ our Lord our God paid in full on the cross. These are the unbelievers. So these unbelieving men, as per the will of God in 1 Timothy 2.4, the reason is that God the Father teaches none to be perished because he paid in full for us on the cross. So now we, the church age believers, should come to the epinosis knowledge of the word of God. That is what it is called to be Ginesco, so that the unbelievers should perceive, should have knowledge. It's as good as a idiom used by the Jewish people for sexual intercourse between a man and a woman, so that they could get acquainted to each other. But over here, cosmos, what we call the world, did not knew my Lord. How would the world who has been spiritually dead could know the Lord? Until and unless we fulfill the great commission of God given to us in Matthew 28, 19 through, or 18 through 20. Go and make disciples of all the nations. The only work for every believer on this earth is to get first to learn or to grasp the spiritual implications of this great and unique word of God. The reason of the failure of the 
people over there in the past of this Israelites who have been given for us as an example to learn. A note over there in Spiros Audiotus Bible of the Keyword Study, he says in Deuteronomy chapter 6, how these people, they failed. Rem instead of remembering Lord God every day, they went along to make rituals without reality. And as the time went on, the proper understanding of this word Shema with its spiritual implications was no longer grasped by the people. And he quotes for us Zechariah 7, 12 through 14, followed by James 1, 22 through 25. In Zechariah 7, you have these words which are describing to you, beginning with verse number 12. Since this is a prophecy where God the Father sends his prophets to write about their failure and to correct them back as Nehemiah teaches to us in chapter 9. He sent them his prophets, but they did not believe their prophets, but rather killed them, he says. In the great confession prayer of Nehemiah chapter 9, he describes the fate of the Israelites. So he says in verse number 12, Yes, they made their hearts as an adamant stone lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Why do you get the wrath of Lord God in the midst of this COVID-19 or something else? The reason is very simple, that they made their hearts adam and stone, lest they should hear the law. Today as well we find many people not hearing the right word of God. He concludes over here for us to learn what is the fate of our life. Many people are exactly the same pattern as Zechariah 7 to well teaches to us. Why do you get the wrath? What the word of Lord God is saying and what are we doing? He says, go and make disciples of all the nations. That's your primary focus. And apart from that, whatever you do, they're just miscellaneous works for you on this earth. But you forget the primary focus of the work. And you have all the things in your mind and you expect peace from God. Rather than having peace, P-E-A-C-E, -E, Shalom, you will have peace, P-I-E-C-E, -E, that is cut off into pieces. Shattered off into pieces. You'll be cluttered and just scrambled out here and there. Because you may be thinking that you could be good with Lord God by doing all the things, but remember, your good deeds are not needed. Your great sacrifices are not needed. He says for us only one thing, that which is truth, that which is knowledge, that which is doctrine, that has to be established in our pulpits. In your lives, your thinking has to be changed. You cannot equally yoke with the thinking of this world, as we read yesterday in Ezra 9.2. They were mixed. They did not separate themselves with the eight categories of the people that survived then in the land including the Levites, the priests, and the common people of the Israel. In 9.4 we read again, the people who trembled, who shuddered to shock. Along with them he comes to fast with the Lord. The people who tremble at the very word of God. Over here we find the destiny of the people. Why? Because as the time went on, they did not grasp the spiritual implications. As the time is marching ahead, a new year come. And today you may find the first week according to your calendar, the first Sunday. As the time goes on, you're becoming like the way of Exodus 32 worship as Aaron prepared a golden calf. And they forgot that the Lord of God would return. They forgot that we need to hold fast to the truth. You know the same Levites describing in Deuteronomy 33.9, the way what the word of Lord God teaches to us. He says about the pattern of this people, the people of this Israelites, what he chose, particularly the sect of this Levites who stood with the Lord God on the rebellion nature of Massa and the rebellion nature of Meribah.
Now coming to this teaching in Exodus 32, particularly Deuteronomy 33, he writes about them. This people, the Levites, for us again today, we being the kingdom of priests to God, as kings and priests to Lord God, he says, the father of him and to the mother of him, he said, I do not perceive you. He did not even inspect. When they bowed down to the golden calf, he did not even inspect that they were the father and mother, but rather he went to slave them off and he slave them. And now coming to the brothers, he says, I do not acquaint or have respect. This is what the word he writes in Psalms 119. We do not have respect for them who don't have respect for the word of God. This should be your quotation for you in your life, as many people will write a great quotations on them. We do not have respect for them who do not respect the word of God. That's it. The greater you fail to respect the word of God, as we read in Psalms 44, all day long I boast in the Lord, for eon I will praise the name that is forever and forever. All day long till to the eon. If that's the attitude of every believer, then we cannot fear about our enemy. We have only one thing to march ahead, that is to go and make disciples of all the nations. If you have respect or regard or respecter of persons, those who do not respect the word of God, you think you have God. The Jeremiah was been said, you shall not fear the people. If you get yourself confused before them, I will confuse you, he said. Therefore, he said, whether they hear or forbear, you go on to preach the word of God, what all I have commanded you to preach, that you do it. That's your duty, you go on. It is not that what we want to think, our prejudiced mind could look in the sheer arts of oratory, but the truth is what the word of Lord God is mandated that we need to complete. Not even to let go iota upon iota and carrera upon carrera, but everything from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, isagogically, categorically, exegetically, with the right dispensing technique of dispensations, day by day, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, we need to go and teach, including iota upon iota and carrera upon carrera, and it takes time. Because we do not have respect or recognition for them who do not respect the word of God. And how long you may be in companion of those people who do not respect my Lord's word. Better be far away, he said in, in, in Psalms 23 verses 18 and 19. Be far away from wine babblers and glutens, the one who eat meat. He said, be far away from them because they may have an influence upon you. Because your body is now the temple of the living Lord of a God, keep it secured and fit for the Lord's battle because we are having a lot of Lord's battle on this earth to continue yet. And we cannot become with the people to defile ourselves. As much as we read yesterday, King Solomon, he did not make Pharaoh's daughter to enter in Second Chronicles 8.11 because he said, the ark of the covenant of the Lord God, which was been bought by David, abides there. Therefore, I will not make this woman to stay there. I will take her to my own home because that's the holiness what we need to maintain. And the same man, he goes to write in the book of Ecclesiastes for us many things. Everything on this sun is vanity. Under this sun is vanity, vanity, vanity. Except keeping and guarding the commandments of Lord God, he concludes. So that every believer could wake up now to realize what is the life of him that has been given and what is the calling that he needs to enjoy in Christ Jesus. Every believer. Because we have now the completed kind of scripture. We have now in our hands the complete figure. We can analyze and take what we are, where we are, the futurity of the people if they don't obey the word of Lord God. He writes in Revelation 4 through 19 to realize what will be the fate of them. Even in the millennium, what will be and what will be our entrance into the heaven if we reject the word of God and if we obey the word of God, what will be our rewards? Everything has been crystallized clear. And how hard heartened should be we more than the people of the Israelites or the people of this John 1.10 who do not knew or who would not get acquainted with my Christ.
Though we have been called in John 1, 12, because in John 1, 11, he says, his own did not receive him, paralambano. In John 1, 12, he makes us now to be his technon believers in Christ. The word technon is nothing but disciples in Christ. And if we aren't growing up to become, and if you still have respect for your brothers who do not obey the word of God, who do not regard the word of God, who do not pay that which is due unto the glory of God, you are as good as mingling yourselves to dishonor the word of God. What the word of Lord God teaches that we need to perform, not what the man wants to hear or what, what the man wants to perform and think. So he says over here, the first category, father and mother, he did not look, he just lived them off. Brothers, he did not recognize them. The son and the sons of him, he did not get acquainted with him. That's what he says again, he knew not idol. Because yada, the Hebrew word, over there in Greek, oida, and the Sanskrit word, what we learn is veda. So here it teaches, yada, they did not get acquainted. And what did they do? They absorbed amarat, your sayings. The word absorbed is again what? Shema or shamma, what you call the word to be for to hear and to obey and to guard more than the very breath what they like. They absorbed the saying of you and the covenant of you they watched. The word called as not said, they preserved, they watched it. This is what the people of the priests in the past they did. But coming to the time of Ezra, chapter 9, we read, including the Levites and the priests, they mingled with the seed of the land. Today as well, when we have been given this great privilege in the church age to understand why it is writing in Second Timothy, chapter 2, it describes what vessels we have to be, gold, silver, wood and clay. And where do we get this gold, silver, wood and clay? In Isaiah chapter 60, because people are interested so that, to show that, or to have in their life to hear that, that the days of mourning are ended. And many pastors would quote that, or many men who know the Bible, while they're preaching, they want to have these references to tell to these people that this is a prophetic word. And they would say, your days of mourning are ended. Don't worry. But today in this generation, no one is ready, particularly in this 2021, to tell the days of mourning are ended. You know why? Because they themselves do not know what will happen if they go after this COVID. And next, what it has come as strain, which is 50 to 70 percent stronger than this COVID, Corona. So they don't want to say these words, the days of mourning are ended. But the word of Lord God says for us, no evil will come upon them. They that go on in praising Lord God and loving the word of Lord God more than seven times a day. That's what we find in Psalms 119 and 164, followed by 165th verse. Again in Psalms 44, verses 8 and 9. There we find in 44, verses 8 and 9, particularly all day long, I boast the Lord till to the eon, that is Jehovah. So he says over here in Isaiah chapter 60 in verse 17 in comparison with 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 20. Because if we fail enough to become or transform from the place where we are earlier, over here in 60 in verse 17 he says, Isaiah, instead of copper I shall bring gold. First one, what is your life? Are you like copper? then you need to become like gold. That's what he says in 2 Timothy 2.20. In the house of the great house of the Lord God, there are vessels of honor and the vessels of dishonor. The vessels of honor, what he calls gold. And instead of iron, he says, I shall bring silver. The second category, what it has to be, it has to be the silver. So your life should be like what? It should be like iron. From iron, you have to now turn out to become like a silver. And instead of wood, you have to become now copper. And instead of stones, what we call as mortar clay, and the things of this wood or this or this clay, what we read in Second Timothy two, it is terracotta stone. It could be replied even for that. So since it is a terracotta stone, he says, instead of stones, what you should become now, you should become iron. What does it meant to say for us? That's the standards of your growth. 
Therefore, if you have your Bible, open it up to 2 Timothy 2. We read from verse 20, he says, In a great house, the word great again is megalas, megas, there are not only the vessels of gold and silver, but also wood and earth. The first category too, he claims over here again in Isaiah 60, 17. From copper, he said, I will make gold. From iron, he's going to make silver. These are the two qualifications what Lord God the Father wants. He wants the people to be either copper or iron. Because from copper he would make you gold. From iron he would make you to be the silver. And that's what he indicates the way of life that we have to lead. Always in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Because either the mud or the tree which has been related to this earth. That is earth again referring back to your inner man, your flesh, your old sin nature. He doesn't want anything to keep there. Because this wood or clay, and what we find over here, the wood or clay, but over here in Isaiah 60, 17, we find for the standards of wood, he would make copper, and the standards of the clay, he would make them to become like iron. So that again, that copper iron should become gold and silver. This is the very simple procedure what we joining as disciples becoming copper to gold, iron to silver should make coming back again the earth referring back to this, uh, this, this plant, wood or the mud on that, the stone on that. What we need to make them? Again, we need to make them to become copper or iron. That's the analogy. That is what you grow up as grammatias and come and make disciples again on this earth because they are also vessels of dishonor, he said. The vessels of dishonor are the earth and the clay. And today we are not able to realize to have a commitment like the way how the Levites had. They did not regard. But today we are having regard to false men. We haven't separated ourselves from the fellowship of false men or those who dishonor Lord God's word. We haven't separated from them. But if the Bible teaches to us, even in eating and drinking, you give glory to God. And he says, do not be with the people who are wine babblers or the glutens of the meat. Then how much more we should be separated in our life to be very clearly acquainted with the word of God and those people who walk and who are being led in the truth of the mind of Christ. The unbelievers we call, as per Isaiah 60, 17, the wood and the stones, the clay, what you find over here in the Greek of 2 Timothy 2, what Apostle Paul writing to Timothy, he says, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Why we call them to be dishonor? Because they who haven't come to the standards of gold and silver. You know what a man on this earth is? He is not content with the standards of his category of life in everything wherever he's been called he wants always the best if he has been born as a bpl that is below poverty line he wants to reach the high standards or what you call them to be in upper status of a man the high society or a middle class and a higher class upper class what we call so he wants always the things of the upper class he doesn't want to be in the middle class or he doesn't want even to be in the lower class. He wants to increase himself. He wants to have the best always. So the same thing what we over here we look is that as believers in Christ, we should always claim to have the best in us. Therefore, he says, you have to come to the standards of copper and iron. And since it is a copper, you have to become like gold. Iron should become like silver because the things pertaining to 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 16 we read that in the great house of the Lord God what he says the foundation being Christ Jesus our Lord how we are going to construct your home upon that it is left to you if you're going to construct with gold silver and precious stones and when it comes to the people of this earth the flesh he says wood a and stubble but he says the time is going to come when your morning days will be ended up. How? When I transform the copper into gold and when I make the iron into silver and instead of wood, again, I want them to become copper and instead of the stone or clay, I want them to become iron so that once again, they could become gold and silver. And that's what the process is. Grammatias into disciples, again, going and make grammatias. Again, they go and make disciples. And he said, I will place supervisor. That is what the one who pays 
his attention with shalom and the officers will be with peace when you're doing this process and the one who are workmen they will be the workmen of righteousness and then you know what he says in verse 18 violence shall no more be heard in the land wasting nor destruction within thy borders but you shall call the wall salvation and thy gates praise you know what a great life we have to live Coming to verse 19, the sun shall be no more the light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. You know, today people don't love to have Christ our Lord our God to be our glory. Because you don't want to transform. You don't want to become from copper to gold, you neither want to become from iron to silver. And the people who are still wood and stubble, they don't want to become either copper or iron. <laughs> what a sad part it is for us to think. What a great glory God the Father has bestowed upon us and what are we looking on this earth? What Bible doctrine is teaching for us and what are we having regards and tolerances for such foolish way of life on this earth? So he says in verse 20, Thy sun shall no more go down. That is what the brightness, the light. And then, Neither shall thy moon withdraw thyself. Day and night you will have the fellowship with God. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of the morning shall be ended. <laughs> this is how it happens, dear brethren. Till that time, no doubt you may celebrate New Year again. No doubt you may have the first week. Again in the next year, 2022, you will have the first week. As long as you become from copper to gold or iron to silver, your days of mourning will not be ended. Because you are rejecting the work and the unique glory of God, so God the Father also knows how not to end your days of mourning. And He gives you every time a great pain in your neck. So we find over here the word mourning is nothing but called as abel. That is, the people who are having the standards as if a one who is a beloved one of you has been dead and you mourn and you lament from him. The day is mourning meant to say if there is a beloved one of you who has been dead and you mourn for him. So that's what it happens, dear brethren, over here. He claims that the days of mourning and lamentations will end. And he says, the people shall also be the righteous. They shall inherit the land. And forever the branch of my planting, the branch what he has planted as in Romans chapter 11, to teach engrafted plant. And then the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. That is to power, to beautify and adorn. And why it is? Because the people shall be all righteous. By the grace of God in the church age, every believer has been made righteous at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. But we are not maintaining that integrity in us. Therefore he said, a little one shall become a thousand. And then a small one will become a strong nation. And then the Lord will hasten in his time. That is what he will hurry to make it in his appointed time. And the time is now for us. The people may think these passages have been available for us in the eternity or in the standards of millennium or eschatological events. If these passages are available now for us, we have to be the people. As he writes, beginning with verse 1 of Isaiah chapter 60, Arise, shine. The passage what we find over here, arise, shine, that is called as kum. And then shine is nothing but to show the ore light. In Isaiah 52.1, we have a passage to listen again in Isaiah 52.1 saying, awake, awake. And the word over here for us is, ur, ur, labesh, zion. And the word labesh meant to say to put on. And the word strength is nothing but for us, oz, zion. But when we come over here in Isaiah chapter 60, God the Father is teaching for us about the church age believers category. The same thing in Ephesians 5.14 we find being quoted by Apostle Paul, who teaches that, Arise, awake, thou that sleepest, so that Christ our Lord our God could shine upon thee. If you have your Bible, open it up to Ephesians chapter 5. We could read that verse in 14. 
because today many people do not understand this quote because they are just happy to look what they could be thinking these passages could be fulfilled in a millennium but we have a lot more to learn right now from copper to gold from iron to silver so he says wherefore he said awake you that sleepest and arise the word awake is nothing but agaira to look upon your great calling in the church age because the day is what you expected to be the salvation they are very near because you do not know when is your death so he says awake that the sleepers that is what the one who has fallen asleep and arise from the dead the word arises an isteme that is to cause up from the people who are necros though they are alive they are dead that's what the word necros and christ shall give the light he added this word called as christ and this divine truth like sun it gives you what it gives you fortizo and the word for the hip for the greek is not fortizo but it is called as epiphyo origin of the word to illuminate our epiphano to bring to light to bring to light that's what he says christ shall give the light in the sense the word christos epiphano again he says soi epiphano it has been used twice we find the word over here shall give again epiphano but over here in the greek it is very very important of the structure because twice it has been used the same code number used for epiphano the epipha ano that is to bring to light to cause to shine to make you to realize the great shining of the lord god which appears to become clearly known so that you could understand and then he says in verse 15 see then that you walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise men the word acribos to look accurately what are the demands of the word of lord god called as circumspectly and then he says redeeming the time because the days are evil the word redeem is very very important over here I meant to say ex agazarazo and then ex ex agorazo meant to say you have to purchase the time because why the days are evil wherefore be you not unwise but understanding what is the will of the law for that cause he says not be drunk in excess in the world but rather be always controlled of lord god the holy spirit the reason why he says that do not be unwise but rather understand what is the will of lord god the word will over here is telema because people would love to look as their life standing on bulomai because they know to look only the will but they will not put into action but here lord god the father records as telema which is not just to know the will but to apply in action the people who continue with in action these are the one called as telemine christ and what is that we quote from isaiah chapter 60 verses 17 through 21 or 22 a small one a one will become like thousand a small one will become a great nation and every day you're alive do the same thing what he has done as long as you die because you love to grieve and squelch and wax and lie and do not want to be in the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit you neither want to prove the proof of the priesthood what they did the levites in Deuteronomy 33:9 and what all the word of Lord God demands you walk absolute contrary to it and you expect peace you expect the peace to be your officers you expect the one who is taking care of you to be the executing one in the standards of the righteousness you expect the walls to be with praise or salvation and your gates to be praise you expect everything to be accord but you haven't gone from copper to gold you haven't gone from iron to silver neither you have made the wood to become copper that is unbelievers to become disciples in my christ <laughs> therefore dear brethren in zechariah 7:12 we read they fail to understand the implications the same thing what he writes in ephesians 5 do not be unwise but rather understand what the will of lord god the father is what is the will of that lord god the father he calls you to do it and he says be control of lord god the holy spirit plera all when you are in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit you would learn the truth and the truth shall set you free and what is the truth you will have a grasp of understanding the spiritual implications given to us in the church age but what are we doing today dear brethren in our pulpits when he said in verse 1 arise awake 
of Isaiah chapter 60. The same thing is quoted back for us in Isaiah, in Ephesians chapter 5, for the very reason where we ought to be in Christ. Therefore, dear brethren, Satan knows very well that the time is short. But you haven't learned that your time is short because you think that to carry the burden of the Lord God is very strenuous. Though the word of Lord God says in Matthew 11, 29 and 30 and 31, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You don't want to carry that yoke and burden because you are looking for the people to be covered with darkness and gross darkness from the people. But when the Lord God hath arisen and given you this glory that shall be seen, the Gentiles shall come to the light and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. You haven't lifted up your eyes to see around and see to yourselves to gather and to look upon the salvation of my Christ to be shown to these people. Because you are still slumbering enough in your sins. The sin of grieving and squelching and waxing and lying and resisting the indwelling and ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. That's what he begins in Isaiah chapter 60. To teach for us in beginning with verse 17. From copper to gold, from iron to silver, from wood to copper, from mud or the stone, what we call as a terracotta stones in the Greek of 2 Timothy 2. He wants them even to become the disciples. And when they are walking in such way, he says, Peace shall be your officers, and the one who guard, they shall be the things pertaining to your righteous standards, that is, the one who drive you, or to make you to become always demanding. The one, what they demand? They demand only righteousness of God. So they shall be the people to guard you. And then he says, Violence shall no more be heard. Or violence meant to say wrong, or cruelty, or injustice. The reasons why the church divide purely because they have violence in them. And what manner of a violence they have? Violence of not having the knowledge of the word of God. As Hosea 4.6 teaches to us, my people perish for what? They perish for the lack of knowledge in Bible doctrine. And how the violence or injustice will come when there is no proper edification in the church. That's what we need to look in Acts chapter 9, the principle of an ideal church. The bona fide work of the pastor teacher is to make the church to grow up in grace. That is what in the standards of Bible doctrine. And it came to pass that we find in verse 31 that the churches had rest throughout all. The word rest is nothing but irony, peace. Throughout all Judah and Galilee and Samaria and were edified. The word is oikodomio, to erect a structure of Lord's knowledge by promoting growth in Christian wisdom, grace, virtue, holiness and blessedness. And walking, that's what it is. The word for us is peruomai, to lead where in the fear of the Lord for boss and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit paraclesis of the Holy Ghost then the congregation where Platuno meant to say to increase to multiply the problem with us is the pastors have failed this work therefore they have injustice they have that violence but here we find the word the violence shall no more be heard in the land and what wasting nor destruction, again, havoc, what we call as this COVID-19, or again, destruction, breaking, as the breaking news like the strain work, or the strain virus, within thy borders, but thou shalt call thy walls. What? The one who have been surrounded by the word of Lord God, he says, you shall call Yahushua, deliverance, the walls, and the gates, that is nothing but the things where you keep your house outward, as the first gate they should enter, called to be as praise, the hilla, to describe adoration and give the great work of a quality of the attributes of God a good explanation. And then he says, the sun shall be no more light. You shall not depend upon the sun, neither the moon, but you shall depend upon Jehovah Elohim, who is your everlasting light. The word for us is olam, olam, or. And then he says, he shall be your glory. 
The word over here is God, Elohim 430, capital G. The sun shall be, shall no more go down, that is what it will go out into existence. Neither shall the moon withdraw itself, that is what you will be always having, the glorious glory of God the Father to provide you the basic things what you need on this earth as long as you are alive. The sun, neither the moon shall be not withdrawn, they shall be always with you, that's what he meant to say. For the Lord shall be thy everlasting light, again the word for us, Olam, Olam, Or, and the days of the morning shall be ended the lamentation and the word shall be ended meant to say it will be made into shalom peace your morning days will become peace the people also shall be all righteous this is what God the Father intended the people of Israelites to be in the past they failed the people of the church age is going a greater failure than the Israelites so he says the people shall be righteous, they shall inherit the land. The word inherit is nothing but yarash, to seize and to possess. And for where? Forever. The word is inner man. The land over here is eretes, inner man. And then we find the branch which has been given of my planting. That is what he has made in Romans chapter 11. What he has made a place of plantation because the branch of my planting planting the work of my hands that I may be glorified you know what is the work of the hands giving Christ our Lord our God for us as a deliverance so that we could work the works of Christ as long as it is day so that looking upon the works what we have done in this light the people should glorify God the Father that's what it meant to say so he says it is for us the the things pertaining to the branch of my planting and the works of my hand that I may glorify. And then he calls a little one, that is what Katan, a small insignificant one or unimportant one, shall become a thousand. You know what a privilege it is for you to become leaders of a thousand, a laugh. And a small one, the one over here is Sa'ir, that is what the one who is little or insignificant or to be as ignoble one he says for us or the least one that is what we find again in Matthew 11 11 the one who has been born least so the same thing over here what you call a small one is called as Sa'er and the word Sa'er it meant to say for us as the least one ignoble the one who has been there greater than John the Baptist he claims in Matthew 11 11 so this small one will become a strong nation what a blessing it is for us it will become a mighty nation and then I the Lord will perform it in his time the word time for us over here is earth and the time is now for us we have to apply that in the principle of Ephesians 5 arise awake and if you haven't become from copper to gold if you haven't become from iron to silver, the time is not yet for you. If you're not making the wood into copper, and if you're not making the stone into iron, you haven't been yet into the walls of salvation, your gates with praise. People love to have upon their gates and walls written up the word of God, but that has to be in you. Do you all the people in your home are righteous to Christ? As Joshua claimed, me and my house shall serve the Lord. The way how they were not righteous in Exodus 32, we find the summary in Deuteronomy 33, 9. They did not inspect father and mother. They did not have respect to the brothers. They were not acquainted with the son and the sons of him. Because they, Shamer, guarded the word of God and they preserved the word of God the covenant which he made with them but the people failed because they did not have the spiritual implications in them that's what we read in Zechariah 7 12 the people they became hard hearted they rejected, they did not obey the voice of Lord God. What did they thought? They thought their life is easy for them to continue in the standards of this earth. They made their hearts as an adamant stone, shammy air, flint like a rock. Lest they should hear the law 
and the words which the Lord of hosts hath sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. The word great is gadol, gadol, and then the wrath is nothing but ketzar, meant to say the anger of Christ. And then, therefore it is come to pass that as he cried and they would not hear, so they cried and they would not hear, said the Lord God of hosts. But I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations whom they knew not. Thus the land was desolate after them, that no man passed through nor returned, for they laid the pleasant land desolate. Opening up to James chapter 1, we find over here again the same warning in the church age, verses 22 through 25. But be you doers of the word and not hearers. The word doers is nothing but poeo into the existence of producing of its independent. And just not hearers, akuao, because if you are only hearers, then you are deceiving your own selves. The word paralagizomai, to reckon wrong. And the word what we find over here, paralagizomai, is nothing but to miscalculate your entire spiritual life. And then it meant to say for us, For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. And this is what the real blessing called as Macarian, and the deed is nothing but what he has called to be Poeo. And then, dear brethren, the way how these people rejected, he says in Hosea 4 6, My people are destroyed. And what did they destroy? They destroyed themselves for the lack of knowledge. The at, the word meant to say knowledge. And why they have been destroyed? Because they have ceased to be operating in the sevenfold spirit of what God the Father teaches to us, in which every believer enjoys in the church age. We have begun that in Isaiah chapter 11. And the sevenfold spirit, what we read over there, the first one, fear, and then knowledge. If you don't have the fear of Lord God, you will not understand the fear of Lord God. Not having fear, you will not go to grow up in the work called as knowledge. And as long as you fail to grow up in the work of knowledge, you will not have counsel or to become Gabor, a strength, a strength of a Gabor spirit. As long as you fail to have Gabor, you will not have counsel. As long as you fail to have counsel, you will not have understanding, the earth file. As long as you fail to have understanding, you will not have the standards of your wisdom. Sixth one. As long as you fail there, you will not have the Spirit of God operating in you. And the word lack over here for us used is nothing but they are ignorant and corrupted. That's the word for us meant to say. They are unaware about this word. Therefore, dear brethren, the primary purpose of our life is nothing but to be what the word of Lord God demands in Isaiah chapter 60 verses 17 through 22. A small one and a least one. And this is what people are not able to realize to mold up their life to the standards of the word of God. So coming back over here to Hosea 4, 6, we read that people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because they have rejected knowledge. The word rejected is ma'as, meant to say despise, refuse. Today as well, people don't want to look that which is right and perfect in the sight of the word of Lord God. They just want to refuse it. So they have become reprobates, thinking that it is not good. Since they have made word of God to become a reprobate, the word of Lord God says, they shall not be to me priest any longer. The things of Malachi, what he claims, that they have destroyed. The link between the head and the, bo and the body, as a neck it could be, as a link between the both. In the same manner, the link is the pastor teacher. And if he doesn't give the body the proper nourishment, then he said, you're going to be the rejected ones. So seeing you have forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. And the word forgotten meant to say, you have ignored my law, I will ignore your children. 
The same thing over here in Hosea 6, 6, again, he teaches to us one of the great passage. I desired mercy and not sacrifice on the knowledge of God more than the burnt offerings. And thus, how many days more you want to be far away from the controlling mentoring ministry of the sevenfold work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, operating in us. As he said, the Spirit of the Lord God, which rests upon him. He came for us from ascending order, but we go now into descending section. The first one, spirit of wisdom, and then understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of fear of the Lord. But it begins the spirit of the fear, as we read 3374, which is called to be era, in the standards that all the days of our life, not only boasting in the work of God, we need to be fearing, fearing the word of God. That's what it is. When we look in Psalms, in Proverbs 23, when we see that the work of the standards of a man on which he has to have jealousy. He says, let not thy heart be upon envying upon sinners, but you be in the fear of the Lord. Again, the word for us, 3374, era called to be terror or fearing of the Lord all the day long, as long as you have light in your life. And we don't have the light of sun and moon, but Lord of our light. And till we die and we go back to eternity, we need to have this fear, as we read that in Isaiah chapter 60. It is he who giveth us the light. It is he who is the Lord of glory. So we need to have that fear forever. Therefore, he says in Isaiah 11, 2, beginning with such fear. And having brought in you the fear of Natsama, let's worship our Lord of God in such standards of biblical truth. Tomorrow, we come back and continue because the presence of God the Father for us every day to lead us in the praise of His glory is needed. As long as we have breath in our nostrils, tomorrow when we stand in His presence, we have to be, to be walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and doing what it has been demanded by the will of God. That's why He has kept us alive. That's why He has made us to be, to make our gates with praise and our walls with salvation. That's why He has made us to grow from copper into the standards of gold and silver into the standards, or iron into the standards of silver. And that's how he has given us and bestowed upon us such grace. And we shall not be the people to use that grace in vain, but rather let's become the praise of his glory to the work of this earth, so that he could have a rejoice to claim that his pleasure has been done to the people who operate in the sevenfold spirit, rising up to the standards of the mind of Christ and teaching the will of God. Dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. With our head, board and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is so very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to abide and possess to know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the past to teach us, the greatest merit is to carry so thorn lagan, herald the word in season and out of season, because the Diamatrum are witnesses where it have been called. The number one Diamatrum are witnesses, indwelling Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two Diamatrum are witnesses or hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, not worry, besides nature, the entire angelic course will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So, dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Spirit, leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, what a great new revelation we have for us in Isaiah chapter 60, verses 17 through 21, O Lord, followed by the teaching of Apostle Paul in Ephesians 5, verses 14 through 18. Help us, Father, constantly to be in the fellowship of controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, leading us to the praise of your glory, and such as diligently sovereign Lord, and save days in offensive us, lead us in the way of everlasting truth, only for the work for which cause you have kept us alive as a small one and a little one, the two words being used for us as a little one into a thousand, as a small one into a great nation, because you will hasten to do it in your time. For these things we are thankful, O Lord, and for the promises which you have given for us. We praise thee and we thank thee all these things only for your glory, as long as you have brought in our nostrils through our lives and through our families. In Christ's name we ask us, O Lord. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten and challenge us by this message. Amen.